This video is sponsored by DeepCut Studios. For more information on officially licensed Gilball products, check the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to CG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm joined by the wonderful Ian. Welcome back, back. again. Yep. Hopefully it'll be welcome back. The, the old, last one is on the main channel by now. It, it should, should be. Totally should, should be. be. Yeah. Uh, so we're back to play some Guild Ball. Wonderful yeah. Guild. Who are you bringing with you today? Today I brought the Morts in. So Morticians. Obulus, Scalpel, the full gang, everybody's there. But specifically Obulus, because we don't go play yeah, Scalpel, because she's clearly going to get nerfed. Scalpel, Scalpel is no fun for anyone. <laughs> Not even Scalpel. Just flash that up on screen. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be playing the Brewers Guild, because fancy to change, a different team, yeah. nice to mix it up. Uh, so yeah, we'll go to our lineups, and we'll catch you in a second. So here we are with Ian's stunning Halloween Mortician team. Do you want to talk us through your lineup, mate? Okay, well, we've got the Halloween special. Obulus and Dirge with the Pumpkin Ball. We've then got Silence in because I think into uh, Esther's lineup, being able to control when your big damage dealers go is going to be quite crucial. Pop in the resilience as well from a distance. Yeah, distance, distance pop on resilience on Esther's and Mash is really handy. I've got Vet Hemlock because this season Vet Hemlock seems to be it's a, a default straight pick. She is an auto include, isn't she? Yeah. She just is. Bonesaw's in there because. Bonesaw goals are a thing. My experience with Mort so far is he scores every game for me. Yeah, he's a reliable goal scorer with the stamina. Yep, yeah. and then brain pan and memory because I very rarely use them, and because we're not on a tournament clock, I think it'd be fun to give them a go. That's and such a cool conversion on brain pan as well. Yeah, they're another neat way of getting around your resilient models as well, being able to just go up and go memory tickle. And just for forcing the passing blows and the ganging up is also yeah also invaluable. So. Yeah, but looking forward to see how they do against the Brewers. Looking for goals. Uh, yeah, for it's, it's, a, it's a super football lineup. There is no takeout capability here <laughs> at all. So <laughs> get the goal of bone saw, try and bang in another two as quick as you can. Yep, that's the that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. And here is my Brewers lineup. And yeah, a bit of a weird mix. Uh, totally not because Decimate and Pine Potter on the painting table are not finished in any way. So there goes my two auto includes. But uh, a really strong, really varied mix. So we've got Esther's leading the team. Um, I really like Esther's. The area ability, I think, is probably one of the strongest upgrades to any team for Season 4. I think having those three heroic plays is invaluable. Basic Spigot, along with Hooper, just in case anyone gets knocked down, that they will instantly be murdered. Uh, Friday is a phenomenal striker, and she benefits from Spigot being there. Mash has changed a lot this season. He's a really good defensive midfielder who can punt the ball up for a Friday sneaky snapshot. I'm going with the pup, Quaff, because he's just really good at buffing people. I think Hooper is going to be playing that veteran decimate role this game in terms of being the real big beater. Uh, and also Scum's dead, so none of that cat business anymore. Actually, I've got almost all live players apart from Mash. So in the future, I'll get decimate and Pipe Park painted. I can have a live team. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very much the opposite to Ian in this sense that we're looking for takeouts primarily and then hoping that Friday and Mash between them can maybe snag the goal needed to push me over the edge. So without further ado, we'll go to the kickoff and go next. And here we are then at the start of the first turn. Now, Ian with the roll off, and you decided that I was gonna to kick to you. Yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Instant regret overnight now while he's had time <laughs> to sleep on it. Uh, Esther's has kicked off, as you can see, she's gone forward and she's just punted the ball into the bottom of the screen there through the forest, which I think Dirge is probably easily capable of going to fetch. I have gone with five influence on Esters, just because the Brewers are going to struggle to get into the Morticians. I think we know the ball's going to get towards Bonesaw this turn. I think it's realistically, I've got a lot of characters who can do things for free or they're relatively got good synergy. So I think it's just put five on Esters to play it safe in case anyone gets too close. Three on Friday, just in case you need to get up the pitch and throw some knives. Spigot really doesn't need anything. He's starting within four of Esters anyway, so his heroic is probably going to be a freebie. One on Quaff in case I want a second win, so on. Three on Hooper, just in case I want to slingshot him forward. He's got quite a lot of movement available to him, thanks to the other players on the pitch. And one on Mash to get him ready to go. He's probably going to be killing the ball once the uh, the bone saw goals happened. How about you, mate? Um, yeah, Hooper Hooper scares me right now because <laughs> the threat range on him with these speed balls, speed call brewers is, yeah. So I'm going for the top, back down to the ball. I've got three on bone saw. For bone saw things, the one sprint, on, meditate the kick ready to go. One, one on vet hemlock because you only need one on vet hemlock. Four on obby because I don't think he's really going to do much. He might puppet master one of his own. One on uh, brain pan 
none on memory, three on silence, and two on dirge for ball retrieval. So we'll go to the first activation of the first turn, which will be the Mortician's Guild. Okay, we can start with dirge. So one to sprint. Pre-measuring the sprint, he's got 10 inches of sprint, so he'll end up here. Zigzagging back. Yep. He's a very Picking good ball, ball retriever. And then with his other one, he's just going to hoof it. I say hoof. Pack it on. Four inches back towards the team. Go somewhere about there. And we'll see if that's successful. Now yes. So you can be Roy Scatter. Superstar, superstar striker, Dirge. <laughs> Right, we'll go black direction and white distance. Three and the two. Three and the two. Pretty much That's straight. pretty much perfect. I'm not really going to faff with that because I can pick that up relatively easily. Lovely, so that will just appear near the bottom there. There we go. And yeah, you've got and the ball safe in Mortician's territory. Yep, now over to you, mate. And you can immediately see we've already begun the forgetting that memory needs to move. So you can see at the top of the screen the little puppet's made a little dodge. We know he's going straight for Esther's, clearly. So, speaking of Esther's, uh, Spigot is starting within four inches of her, so he can make use of Aria to put up Times Called, which is a three plus two plus two move. That'll actually be really useful for him. It'll allow him to cross the rough ground without actually worrying about losing his five-inch move. We've just pre-measured it. It gets him to the other side here, uh, which will put him... Just, I think we measured it here, just within four inches of Esther's and within four inches of Hooper and the Doggo to benefit from that movement buff. Okay, so then on to Brain Pan. And because it's Brain Pan, I will remember the memory dance. Memory makes a two-inch dodge to the cover. It's on his way. He's on yeah, his way. he's going. He's going. Brain Pan is about three and a half from the ball, so with a five inch jog, he'll go two and a half, snap, two and a half, back. Just end up slightly behind where he was. And he'll spend his one to try and pass the ball to silence. This is where Ian was saying that he was worried that all of his kicks will start to fail. Two now. dice, two dice kick, but it is just needing three because it's a tap in. Ah, oh, nailing it. So the, football, you... the football marks are in force. <laughs> that gets me a point of momentum, which I'll just pop there. I'm sure you don't want to dodge, it. like, you know, half out the pitch. No, I, I don't think I will yet. Over to you. Mash, then, is going to spend his one influence to make a six-inch sprint, which gets him just to this position here, within an inch of the cover, just ready for basically returning the ball up the field and staying in cover and being awkward and doing mashy things. Okay, we're going to see whether or not we can keep up this superstar football march lineup. Silence is going to spend one and try and pass the ball to Obulus. We're out of two dice kicks and on to three, so this is where I'll miss. You're upgrading now. Three dice, this time we need a four. Nope. No. Nope. Nailed it. <laughs> Another point of momentum. Um, Let's just have a quick check on where that would put us. That's not far enough, so I will hold it. And have then, you dodged memory? Oh, I haven't dodged memory. This is me, my sportsmanship yeah. here. I'll we'll dodge memory that way. I really need to write it down. Dodge memory. Just put any knuckles tucked in. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to walk up to within eight of Esther's. Start trying to pop that resilience. And we're going to spend one to go for a tucked. Now we'll go for shutout. So, so shutout does. She'd have to activate last. Okay. And needing a three. Yeah. So that pops some resilience. So resilience is popped. I've then got the option of putting her on tucked, which would force you to activate her next. Yes. Or I can use Silence's tenacity trait to lower the cost of a character play. Lob some fire. From, or change it by one. So I can then spend one and just drop a fire template. And I can drop that within six of them, which means I can start irritating the potential Hooper run. <laughs> and go. I think that's probably the sensible move. I think block off the middle of the pitch. Yeah. And back to you. 
Over to the pup then. Pretty easy, actually, one for me. Uh, he is going to put uh, Pick Me Up, but I'll use Bag of Quaffers because that was the old name for it, to give plus one attack to Hooper. Uh, spend the one influence to put second wind on Hooper just in case he does get himself in a sticky situation and needs to dodge out. And then he's going to make a six inch base move just to this position here to kind of run goalie ish interference for me. Right, so memory has dodged because we're going to activate Vet Hemlock. Vet Hemlock will Soulseer to take three damage, allowing her to make Midnight Offering cost one. Puts down to nine. Does and she's going to jog Bonesaw, so Bonesaw is going to jog to here with these three influence, and then she's going to take a jog to here up to the cover. It's an aggressive advance already. It with, is with your good kicks that are going to come later. I think it's potentially it's a sweeping super football aggressive more. <laughs> Friday is going to make a shadow-like move just to that position there. She's going to spend one of her three influence to make a sprint action just around Esther's to the edge of the rough ground here. So she's now within four inches of Spigot for the defensive bonus. And she's going to use her last two influence to attempt to throw some dirty, filthy, mean knives at Silence. So I'm looking for fives, mate. Yep, fives to hit Silence. What did Silence ever do to you? He just, he, he's got a weird skill cap on. So fives. Oh, five for six. That's, uh, that's unexpected achievement. That's one damage, um, minus one defense, and the poison condition on the man. I'll take that. That'll do. Uh... Yeah, fair play Friday. That was, uh, the shock is in my voice. Okay, so we've dodged the puppet up to continue moving it in to plug that one gap that Hooper can come through and punch me in the face. So Obulus is going to start. He's going to shadow like for two. Which puts him to here. Oops. He's then going to spend four to Puppet Master Silence away from trouble. <laughs> Run away! These morps might be aggressive, but they're not silly. <laughs> so Silence jogs back the other side of the cover. With these dirty knives and his poison. Watch there. Obby then walks four. Looks back at you and drops the ball within an inch for bone saw to snap. Lovely. Estus then is angered and she's going to scream at silence for kind of uh, backing away rather sensibly. You don't really want to mess with her. She's going to spend one of her influence to sprint. Her sprint would be six up to eight, back down to six because of the rough ground. She's going to go to this position here, just for the back of her base within four inches of Hooper. Take that with her. She's staying away from the fire because it's a needless condition. Uh, she's going to spend two to put quick foot on Hooper just to extend his threat. Spend another one to tool him up. So he's basically Hooper's with a veteran decimate in this scenario. He's getting all the tokens at the start. Um, just because Esther's ideally would have just walked and churned a bit of momentum for me, but that's not needed. And this last piece of influence is unspent. Okay. Bonesaw's going for it. Bonesaw, Bonesaw was deciding whether or not tying the momentum race was better, but if I lose on the card, I've then got Mash ready to punch me. And, and the rule with the channel is get the points on the board. Things can slide. Is, yeah. So Bonesaw with stamina gets a free five inch jog at the start of his movement, which puts him to just outside the two of Mash. He'll then sprint the other side of Mash for one. And because he's got swift wind, he can go yeah, straight can over the top. Ignore he's a the cover. Monk. And ignore that. So I'll be engaged by Mash, but I'll have a clear path to the ball. I'll spend one to Take meditate. That with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, let's put it there. Let's be ambitious. So, meditation. Meditation lets me re-roll any of the dice on my next kick. One for the kick. Point of momentum to make it a goal shot. Do you want a bonus time? Uh, three dice will go down to two. It goes down to two, but with a re-roll. He's navigating it's effectively, kick. <laughs> it's effectively a four dice kick. Ah, uh, I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm gonna risk it. Oh, he's going gonna to risk it for a biscuit. So you are looking for a four plus here. Yep. That's still up, mate. Left-handed roll. 
Gets the five. Gets it. Bangs it in. I don't even need to re-roll because I can't get a screamer out of that anyway. And that is four VP. It gets your point of momentum back for the goal. Does point of momentum, which any dodgy dodge? Oh, risky. There's no way really anywhere good. He can I can't dodge. really get away from Hooper anyway, so I'll just hold on to the momentum and hope that I'm still alive so after the kick out. I'll boot it out and we'll go to the last activation for the Brewers next. Hooper then, this is, uh, the ball's gone for the worst possible place it could go. I've put it behind Spigger and Esther's hoping for a nice scatter onto either them or Friday and it's launched all the way into the fire. So Hooper is going to have to get his, uh, his beret a bit toasty. Now he's on all the movement bonuses in the world. So he's got a five inch base move that goes up to seven thanks to uh, the agility bonus from Esther's with quick foot. Plus two again because of Spigot's times called. So all the way from five up to nine, but he's going to go through the fire, which will go down to seven. We've pre-measured everything. It gets him to this position here, just staying outside of an inch of memory. He's going to drop the ball here, which Esther will then snap just to, you've got to put it on the resilient model. I couldn't leave it really. Um, so all of these bonuses under the sun, I'm just going to leave over here. Um, we're going to have a round of attacks on Bonesaw. So first one, we've got a attack of five base. However, we'll lose one because Bonesaw is in cover. We are then going to actually put up, before I forget, True Grit for free because I'm within the area. We get two for that. We get one because of the uh, Pick Me Up or Bag of Quaffers on him. And we get another one because Mash is nearby. I think that is all the correct dice that I need to be rolling. Yep. Uh, we're looking for five pluses against Bonesaw. Yep, def five on Bonesaw. Okay, so let's see if we can do relatively well here. We manage nothing typical. I'm glad I have that extra influence now. Yep. We'll try again. Oh, come on. A five would be great, please. Uh, that's, a bit, that's a bit better, isn't it? That's uh, four successful hits. Uh, four successful hits is going to be a momentous three up to four damage, mate. Okay, and that leaves Bonesaw on eight. And we'll swing once more with the last piece of influence. We've got one, two, three, four, plus two for two grip, plus two for the bonuses. Go again. Uh, that is one successful hit. That is going to be... Ooh, I think you're on two momentum. I'm on two. I'm just going to take the momentous push and be angry at my lack of... Uh, lack of decent rolls here. So, I'm going to push Bonesaw out of the cover just to there so he's still being engaged by mash and luckily because I've got second wind on me from quaff when I end my activation I can make a four inch dodge so Hooper is quite simply just going to dodge himself to re-engage Bonesaw if that makes sense there um, so anyway that is the end of the first turn and we will go to the end of turn summary and the ploy cards next this is how we look at the end of the first turn and uh, dice rolling did not go in my favour at the end there but still Bonesaw is in a dodgy position at the start of this. Uh, Hooper has taken one for the fire damage of him going through the inferno. Silence has taken two poison damage. Yep. You got your goal on the board though mate so did. all good. I think I am on plus one momentum because I've got three and you've got two. Yeah. So we'll go to our game plan cards and flip them over. Dun, I have dun, gone dun, with dun. a plus four to keep the ball moving. You've also so gone for a plus I. four. Uh, so what's your one then? Keep My one is keep your chin up, so I basically get a free come on mate to either clear conditions or heal four on another model. That is a very solid move. I've got keep the ball moving, which is plus one dice to the kick, because I think Esther's and Mash are kind of going to want to make use of that in this one. So, uh, we'll go to the allocation for the second turn. So there's a debate there about whether I should go first or second. I've declared to go first, and I think it was because I was unsure what exactly Ian could do with Esther's being resilient with the ball. But I think what we've decided between us is it actually makes sense for her to walk around, be the one who kills Bonesaw. And then Aria is still in the middle of the pitch. She can drop the ball to Mash. He's got his pass to boot it up. It's not the worst scenario in the world. And she can, any influence she's not spent, she can then buff people around her, uh, i.e. Hooper. So six on Esther's. Three on Friday to get up the pitch and maybe chuck some more knives where necessary, try and reduce those defence fives down to defence four if we get a lucky roll. Three on Hooper, so he's still a massive threat. One on Mash in case he needs to clear space for himself. Spigot really doesn't need anything, we've said. He, he's just basically a times called machine at this stage and he's there to help Friday out. And nothing on the dog, sadly, for second wind because I think repositioning in a scrum at this point is not the worst thing in the world. I think a scrum is actually what the Brewers want and I don't really need to reposition much when I've got the momentous pushes available. 
How about you, mate? Uh, I've gone two on Bonesaw, because I think I need to keep you honest there. Yep. If you don't go for him, he can do something. Uh, three on Vet Hemlock, because I think Blind may come into play, um, potentially moving the rest of my team around. Obulus is just getting two. I'm not sure where he's positioned, if Obulus can actually really affect the game. Three on Silence, because if I haven't popped resilience on people I'm going to need to and he can from eight inches away. Three on brain pan because hopefully I can get in and get memory tearing into people. And two down on dirge in the corner because depending on the timing of your actions I might be able to get a charge off and single out Friday at which point she becomes a little bit of a victim. Yeah she's she's near spigot at the moment but if she gets the extra attack against her it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so we're going to the first activation of the second turn which will be the Brewers Guild. Okay, so we're going to start with Esther. She is going to make her way around here. We've nudged a few models, but we did say she can get to this position here just within an inch of bone saw. She is going to spend one of her influence, I think this is probably the right move, to tool herself up just to kind of make this a bit more reliable in what we're attempting for. And then she's going to buy a round of attacks. Any response, mate? I'm going to spend this momentum to counter. Lovely. Okay. Hopefully it's proper glut mass if I'm not knocked down. Yeah. That's it, really. It depends on what we roll here. So Estes has got five attack base. She's got two friends helping her out with this attack, and she is looking for five pluses, mate. Yep. She come around the other side of the camera because I need to. I know I can't. I can't move my way around. There's too many wires. Uh, we'll go this side. Uh, five pluses. That you happy with that one? Yeah. Is that dodgy? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so she manages one success there. That is going to be a. Oh, I don't know what to do. Um, the momentous push is tempting. I'll take one damage up to two. I need okay. to chip away. Uh, you've got your counter attack then, mate. Yep. So I've got attack five goes down to three, thanks to the two buddies. And you look for threes and one. Yep. Two hits. Which is enough to get what would have been something, anything, a non momentous dodge, but. Yep. Pops the mass. Uh, we'll go for another attack here then. See if we can do a little bit better. So, five pluses again. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's not bad. Uh, I think that's a wrap. Yeah, she's got a playbook of four. Uh, and then two on the wrap. That's going to be a momentous three up to four and a momentous two up to three. Which will kill him. Kill hey! Him. He had six health on him. So, one terrible roll then becomes one really good roll. Uh, so, that'll take Bone Saw and his influence away. That's played relatively well. Uh, unfortunately, I've tooled it myself, so I can't really make use of it on anyone else, but I've still got three influence to play with. Uh, so the temptation here is to basically put some buffs out. So I think I'm going to spend two to put uh, Quickfoot onto Hooper, just in case I need to mitigate the fire without having to get rid of it. I'm going to spend one to attempt to pass it to Hubby Mash. So Esther's has three dice base, however, because of my plot card, I get an extra one. We're looking for a four plus. She triple screamers the pass, which will get the ball to mash. And I think I'm very tempted here to make the dodge actually to spend the momentum and dodge him. So I'm just gonna decide where to move him and we'll cut back in a second. And yeah, I've taken the dodge and I've just dodged Mash straight back next to wife Esther's. I think we know memory can come in and cause some issues here, but it's still relatively safe in that area with the resilience and the things that are available and melee zones. So that'll do for my first activation. Okay, so I'm gonna go with silence. Silence is just going to jog the other side of the cover, the end of this template to there. He's then going to spend one to throw Tucked. Sorry, shout out. Tucked, sorry, on Mash. So Tucked is the one that's forced Mash to go next. Okay. Uh, so you're looking for a three plus yep. on two dice, is it? One yeah, dice. one dice. Uh, it's off camera, but he's got a six, so that will pop. Forgot I was rolling. It'll pop the uh, resilience, I haven't yep. got the resilience token, but we know. Okay, and then I'm going to try and do. Tucked. Not tucked. I go again. Wrong way around again. Shout out on to Hooper. To so make force, him go last. Force Hooper to be the last to activate. So needing a three again. Gets yep. it. So no damage, but he is he is shot out. Shot out, so he will have to go last. So and then you've got one influence available. I imagine a fireball's. I'm gonna yeah, I think I'm gonna 
do the uh, the tenacity cost one fireball and I can throw that within six so let's move that dice out of the way so the temptation is to throw it over here and make mash slow yes um, but there's also Friday to worry about <laughs> A single dice hitting Friday is not really going to do anything. So we'll throw the fireball over there. Basically on these three here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. against uh, Hooper, you're looking for a three plus, mate. Yep. So you're on one dice here for your tenacity. Gets it. That's one, one point of damage. Yep. One point of damage. He's already burning. Puts him on 14. Uh, yep. For Esther's, you need a three again. Yep. One point of damage. Puts her on 21. Yep. And puts her on fire, more importantly. And uh, mash threes. Gets yep. it as well. Puts him on 14 and on fire as well. I will fish out some tokens in a second. Yep. Flambeing everybody. Yeah, and then we'll drop the template underneath them. Over to Quaff then. Quaff is going to do the uh, the Quaff shuffle and just move to this position here and impart a lovely pick me up on Hooper. Just give him the extra attack again. We also had forgotten the memory little dodge when it did silence. So we've just shuffled him in. Yeah, he's just there. You've basically put him in the middle of the pitch just because you're trying to decide exactly where to be blocking and where to be getting in the way. And I'm minus one dodge now that bone saw's gone. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with Brain Pan now that we've shot out Hooper and he can't go yet. This is a chance for me to put a little bit of death on him. So we've dodged Puppet in and Brain Pan walks to the end of the cover. He then uses the Puppet Thanks to Puppet Show. So we buy an attack on Hooper. Brain Pan through the Puppet. Attack five, threes and one. Threes and one indeed. Uh, I'm not going to declare anything because there's no point. As you said, you can dodge back in. Uh, one. <laughs> which is not going to happen. Momentous one damage, which is uh, tough. I delete. Yeah, tough. I delete that. Buy another. That's better. That's a bit better. Two hits. Not a huge amount better because that's just a momentous dodge but it's a point of momentum and by the last one I'll bonus time this one just to see if I can get something out of it yep <laughs> yep so two misses one off three is a momentous two goes down to one and a point of momentum and it's back over to you. Spigger is going to continue his slow advance at the pitch. He's going to move to this position here, which puts him within four inches of everybody around here. And he's going to just chock up times called for free, thanks to Esther's and her lovely area play. Right, so it's a kind of difficult activation choice now. So I'm going to go with Obulus. We've already dodged the puppet slightly closer to Mash to be a bit of a pain. We're going to spend one put confidence on Vet Hemlock. And then after a shadow like, I'm gonna shadow like this way. And then sprint around the other side of this cover. Generally be a bit of an arse. Start blocking Friday's goal run. And that I think is it. Back to you. Mash then is going to go next, seeing as we're still waiting for Hooper with his big wind up for this turn as uh, Silence has put evil thoughts into his head. He's going to spend one influence to hit memory because it's a free influence, might as well use it. So five tap base, plus one for Hooper being there, looking for fives, mate. Yep. And a manage, one successful hit, which will just be a point of damage. Doesn't really do much to the puppet. Knocks the puppet down to two. It does a third of its health. Yep. Uh, but I'm just outside of the puppet's melee zone, so I've got plus two move because I'm near Spigger, but I'm on minus two because I'm on fire. We've just measured it, gets mash to the other side of Esther's there. He is, should be just within five inches of Friday. Yep. He's going to pop his Heroic for free, which is batter up. This model may make a pass without spending influence. The pass gains zero plus four kick. So he has now got a 10 inch kick. And because of my game plan card, that's a four dice 10 inch kick. And because I'm within five, it's a tap in. So I've got four dice looking for a three to get the ball over to Friday. Gets it, knocks the ball over to her, which generates me a point of momentum. And I think for now, it's going to stay unspent. Okay, so 
as I can see Friday's ridiculous range goal run coming. I've got to try and do something about it. So the confidenced vet hemlock will take a jog to just within six, that's well within her six inch jog. We'll go to that. And we will spend one plus my momentum for a bonus timed blind. So Friday's defense would be four, but it goes up to five because she's near yeah. daddy issue spigot. So let's see, that is I've a got it. Didn't even need to reroll, didn't even need the bonus time. See, should, you need to be confident. This is what obvious to say, is like, just be confident. <laughs> Uh, so it's minus two move, minus two move. Minus two kick as well. Yep. And minus two tack as if she's going to actually attack anything. Yep. So we've then got two left, which we will midnight offering ourselves to get the flock away from the Hooper <laughs> battle tank. The pain going to come. So six inches back, we'll just go back behind everybody. Oh, I forgot to dodge the puppet. Rookie errors. This puppet. I don't think you actually dodged a puppet yet at the start of any I, I think I did it at the start of the game. There you go. Um, yeah, we'll dodge the puppet back round so it can be a pain for yeah. tie people up in combat. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just jog away. Is that age? Normal, it's normal influence, isn't it? She's not needing to soul sear. She her. hasn't soul seared. Lovely. Keeps herself healthy still. Yep. And then. Uh, do I just use my card because the card is there and heal four on silence? I think I will. I'll use the free come on mate or rest or whatever it's called in season four. <laughs> and he'll take heal back up to full. Yep. Lovely. So back over to you. Friday's turn to go on a goal run then even though she's just had like, you know, weird mortician ink chucked in her eyes. She gets a shadow like to here to begin with. She is starting within four inches of Spigot, so she gets plus two move, which will undo the blinds. Minus two move. Yep. So she's going to sprint over to this position with the ball. Just purge that. Thank you, my dear. She's got two influence left. She's going to pop her heroic, which is I shoot better after a beer, which adds a additional dice and two inches to her kick. So she'd have a 10 inch kick, but it goes down to eight because she's still blinded. Originally, she'd have three dice base, plus one for I shoot better after a beer, plus one because of my card, because of the blind, I will lose two. Yep. So do you want a bonus time this Yeah, time? so I've got my momentum with heroic, spend a second one to make a shot and a point of influence here, and I am gonna bonus time it, so I'll go up to four dice. So I've got four dice, needing a uh, four plus. And she bangs it in. Scores the goal, gets point of momentum back. I could take the dodge, but I think she's probably going to stay there. Right, you were wondering where to boot the ball, whether to get to Dirge for a goal run or Bonesaw next turn. And you've, uh... Dirge, Dirge has a two activation goal run to get there because of <laughs> his massive flight distance. But he also could just get knocked off the park by MASH. <laughs> so, discretion, tactics. The ball's over here. And so the bird is going to charge into Friday. Friday's going to take a defensive stance because fives and one. Yep. So the bird has a 10 inch charge, which gives us a ridiculous range. He's just going to sling himself the other side of Friday. Base to base. Cost of two. That gives him a mighty tack seven on the charge. Do you wish to spend your momentum? Yeah, like I said, defensive yep. stance, so fives and one. Okay, fives and one. Bringing the dice in. And it's enough to momentously single you out, because there are two. So now she's blind and she's feeling really, really picked on. And it's really just the momentum to give yep. you that one advantage on the next roll. And we'll finish up the turn with the patient Hooper who's been waiting all this time with his bat. Yep. Over to Hooper to round out the turn and he's finally got himself ready to go. He is gonna immediately use True Grip which will heal his burning condition and also add plus two tack. He's gonna make a move, taking the part and blow from memory over to this position here, which will engage both brain pan and silence. Okay. He's got plus two move because of Spigot, plus two move because of the agility that Esther's gave him. He's pretty quick. So part and blow, mate, yep. you've got how much attack? Attack five, plus two for the part and blow. Looking for three and one. Uh, you've got space here. Yep. Uh, happy with that one. Multiple hits. So that's one miss, one off. That gives me 
The wrap does nothing because it's one damage, which is tough hide elite. Yep. That uh, gives me three damage. Down to two. Yep. Uh, so Hooper then is going to start making some attacks. He's going to start with. We're discussing who to attack with a brain panel silence. Silence is being more of a pain at the moment. So we're going to attack silence first. We have got five tack base plus two for true grit plus one because of the pick me up from the dog. And we are looking for five pluses, mate. Yeah? Yep, that's five. Dun dun dun. Oh, it's not bad. Uh, dun dun dun. Four successful hits is going to be. I mean, the knockdown is tempting, but I'm just going to take the Momentous 3 damage. Yeah, okay. That. So that is Momentous 3. 9 health on silence. Attack again. So we've got all of our dice back. Continuing to look for 5s. Uh, after 5s, we get one successful hit that time. I'll take the Momentous push and leave him where he is. Final round of attacks. Just trying to stack up on momentum here, really. I mean, the knockdown probably would have been a good move earlier, but I want the damage, really. Uh, happy with that one again? Yep. That is two successful hits, I think I can see. Uh, it's going to be another momentous push, I think. And that will do for Hooper. So we will clear off everything, mark the conditions, and go to the end of turn. Okay, and this is how things look at the end of the second turn. We are currently sitting at a score of 6-4. Friday managed to bang that goal even with the blind is uh, is a big game for the Brewers, I think. And even though Hooper didn't really manage to put too much hurt out, he's now an engaging both Brain Pan and Silence, which is a bit of a pain for them in case anyone else wants to come in and deal some hurt. So we've got three momentum to me, one to you, mate. So we'll go to our game plan card. Yep. I've gone for a plus six. So I've gone for the grudge match. I'll go for back in the game so I can reallocate influence from the model that Hooper inevitably wipes so. Uh We both get to choose someone to have uh, plus two tack against them with singled out, which we'll select in a second. I think I am going to go first, but I will lose my influence that I gained from scoring the goal because it is a minus one influence ploy. Yeah. So we'll do our singled out, we'll do our influence allocation, and we will cut back in a second. And we've zoomed out ever so slightly because Bone Taurus came back on the pitch swiping the ball. Uh, so let's start with our singled outs. I was trying to choose between Brain Pan and Silence, and I've just popped it on Silence for now. And you, mate? I've gone for Friday. Because... Friday with obvious with a big stack of influence yeah. next year. It it's between it's between Friday and Spigot, and I think the tough eyed Spigot is just going to be a little bit too much to chew through in one go. Speaking of Spigs, he's actually got some influence this turn. He's probably going to barrel into Silence and knock him down and murder things. Uh, Hooper's got three on him. We've got four on Esters, nothing on Mash, because I think the, the free heroic pass is enough for him to be doing his job where he is at the back. One on the dog in case I need to second wind, and one on Friday just to keep uh, Ian honest, really, and just to stop him from just walking away from her. How about you, mate? Yeah, I've got the same. It's one on Silence to force you to deal with him before he starts being a pain. Uh, four on Brain Pan, because memory things. Three on Bone Saw, because Sprint, Meditate, Shoot. One on Vet Hemlock, because she can still be a bit of a pain with one. And a fat stack of six on Obby. Lovely. So we will go to the first activation of the third turn, which will be the Brewer's Guild. So Spigot is excitedly going to start the turn. He is going to immediately chuck up Time's Called, because he is within Estes' area. He's going to walk away from memory, taking a parting blow, and he's going to finish here within an inch of the cover, engaging Brain Pan and Silence. So do you want to do your... Swipe yeah. of anger, mate. Spigot has got to hide these only threes and one. Uh, you've got space there for yep. roll. So attack five plus two for the parting blow. I'm um, happy with that one. Yeah, it's a uh, full playbook, I think. Uh, it's after the armor, it's not. So it's a momentous, well, not momentous, but two goes to one. One damage puts him on 13 health. Uh, right, Spigot is going to spend one to attack silence. Any reply? Uh, you knock down on one. I do. <laughs> no, probably not. No. Five tap base. Uh, minus one for ganging. However, I gain one because of Hooper ganging up. And then get two for you being singled out. Yes. Okay. So I've lost one for Brain Pan, gain one for Hooper. And I have a singled out. Yep. Death five. Fives. Oh. Yep, yep. Oh my <laughs> god. Um. I think that might be a wrap. It is. 
That's that is atrocious, mate. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'd like to see the waiting on those. Yeah, can we have can we have the percentages, please? It's the Brewers ones that are fade off here. Um, I'll take the momentous three and the momentous knockdown, mate. Uh, just grab a knockdown token for you. I was not expecting such rolls. <laughs> to knock him on his bum. That changes things quite quickly. Uh, so that knocks him down to what? It knocks him down to four. Wow. Um, so we've got our five tack, which goes down to four because of brain pan. What's, what's one? Plus one because of Hooper. Plus two for singled out. And now I get an additional plus two because you are flawed which is a plus two attack when you're attacking someone knocked down. So we're after four pluses this time. Yep. It's kind of, I was gonna say it's even now and then I looked at the dice and I was like, no, it's not, it's not. He's on four health. Yep. Uh, momentous three, non-momentous one. Okay. Which pops him. And lets me reallocate his influence. Yep. Is it someone within? Someone within eight. Eight. Hemlock, so, question mark. Well, it could go to Obby, because Obby can take up to it seven. It could go to Obby. Um, but I think it might be more use on Hemlock, because she can then be more of an annoyance. Okay, so we'll get rid of these statuses and the singled out. Yep. That singled out paid for itself very quickly. So that's my second attack, that was. Yep. Uh, I'm now going to tap Brain Pan. So Spigot's got five tack, but it'll go down to four, because you are also in cover. Yep. I gain one for Hooper, and I think that's it for this time round. That is it. Fours and one on Brain Pan. Fours and one. This is where the dice are leaving out now. Um, no. <laughs> Two hits is going to be a momentous knockdown. Which gains me another point of momentum, putting me on five. And then we'll swing one final time. So we've got our four tack. Our one for Hooper, and then another, another an additional two for uh, yep. Flawed. I'm flabbergasted by such things. Uh, I'm looking for threes and one this time. Yep. It's the Brewers dice that are doing it. So two away, one armor. It's going to be the full playbook. That's going to be a momentous three damage. Mate. Okay, that leaves him on eleven. Eleven. Uh, the temptation here is to heal Spigot or to heal Hooper because essentially. They're both quite weak and fragile. I think, for the moment, it's going to be a bit of a waste for the sake of one HP. But I've seen Spigot get deleted by Obulus before, so I'm just going to spend one of my five, one of my six, sorry, to heal Spigot back up to full health. I think Hooper can probably take it with a counter attack, but I might be wrong. I am probably wrong. I'm also going to spend two to heal Hooper because I'm going to regret that. So they're both back up to full health because there's no point in you hoarding the momentum yet because you've not used your legendary. Right, so we've remembered to dodge the puppet first. Medic Obby is going to fix everybody's Ob problems Obulus, now. Obulus has to go earlier than Obulus wanted. Because um, Hooper's going to go into Bones or otherwise, or kill Brain Pan or both. It is. So Obulus goes, I think I actually legendary as well, and just steal. Yeah, you get three. three of my momentum. I'll come and hand over my... Well, you can have them there, your stolen, yep. stolen ill-gotten gains. So I, I, think, I think this one might be important. Yeah, you can start bonus timing attacks on Friday as well. Yeah, then. so legendary four. Don't forget to shadow like. Master. Oh yeah, shadow like as well. So many things to I know, do. Morticians. We don't need to go that far. We just go to within two. Yep, you're within range to yep. try and hypnotize Hooper. Four to shadow like, to hypnotize Hooper with four dice. Need a three plus, mate. He's, he's, he's warming the dice so Debating, confidencing myself. <laughs> yeah. So that's five dice, that's cheap. I can bonus time it. Yeah, you've got the dice that you've stolen. Do yes. you comfortably manage that? There is not taking any chances. Now Hooper doesn't get the times called because he's a friendly model for this jog, so yeah. you've got his base five and you basically just chuck him straight I'm back just on, gonna mate. send him all the aways. <laughs> all of the go aways. Get away, foul fiend. <laughs> There you go, you smelly brewer. Go over uh, there. And now you've still got two influence in which to two. slap Friday about. I am going to stand up brain pan. For two momentum. For two momentum. That's before he's a gone. solid move. <laughs> and then, yeah, I've got two attacks on Friday. So the first one, I'll be base attack five, two for singled out, and one for the bird. And you're looking for fours and one against Poor Friday. 
Oh, it's not bad. Uh, it's not yeah, bad that, that makes me feel slightly better. Five so hits. Five hits. Let's see. That's Obby's weird playbook. It now. is. It's it whether it's non momentous three or whether I take the knockdown. Um. I'll take the non-momentous, th uh, no. yeah, non-momentous three, first of all. Puts it down to nine health, mate. Then I'll hit you again. Oops, that one's making a bid for freedom. Where's the one? It doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> that was a drop, that wasn't a roll. <laughs> so, another, oh, sixes? Uh, it's almost Yahtzee. <laughs> uh, yeah, one, one off. So you've got five again. Five again. I think I have to take a momentous result this time, though, because she's on nine health. She's on nine health at the moment. You can do momentous two to her. Yeah, I'll do momentous two to get the momentum back. Puts her down to seven HP, which is tasty with brain pan nearby. Yep. Anything um, else, mate? No, I think that's me. Back over to you. So there was big discussions then of uh, exactly what we were going to go for and exactly what we wanted to try. I think Friday could potentially dodge away and get her heroic up if she's lucky with the dice rolls, but I'd rather just shut the heroic up where she stood and then just maybe have her for a fluky punt. And I think even then I'm spending the momentum as soon as I get it. Hooper might have to waste a bit of influence to attack memory. Esther's could do it. Bone Saw's kind of out of range at the moment. It's not ideal no matter what I do. And Brain Pan having four influence is a massive, massive pain in my backside. Um, so the temptation is basically either Esther's or Hooper to walk and wail on the puppet a little bit and try and get some kind of influence and things up. So actually I'm going to go with Esther's. And Esther is going to have to charge because she's got a two inch move. So she's going to charge four into base to base contact with memory. Any response, mate? Oh, that raises the question. Do I dash stand? Yeah, you hit me on the 60s. Got five base plus four for charging plus one for Hooper. No, it's fine. Okay, we're looking for five pluses. We get. Five successes, which is a wrap. So I will take the momentous knockdown, just take the puppet out of action, and the momentous push. I think you've got a knockdown token just on the other side yep. there, mate. Um, what I'm then going to do is use her soothing voice for one of the momentum that I've just gained to heal the flambeing from both her and hubby mash. Uh, remove all conditions that they are suffering. She's then going to attack memory once more, so I'll lose my four for charging. So I've got my base, five plus one for Hooper being there, looking for four pluses now. And she spikes it again. That is five successes, which is a, another wrap. I'm going to take the momentous push twice, and I'm going to push memory around this side. A little bit around the base. It probably would have been a bit... No, it has to be a straight line, doesn't it? So yep. that way. I'm going to spend my last one uh, just to tool up Hooper, making him a bit more of a threat. And I think that's relatively solid. The area is still in play now for Hooper to make use of. It's clear memory from being a little bit of a pain now. You've got to spend the momentum if you want to be doing stuff. Um, yeah, spiky dice do spiky things. Should have also said at the end of Ian's last activation, Obulus did move into space yeah. with Friday because yeah. that's sensible. We, we forgot that one. We turned the camera off before that one. Um, right, so I've, uh, I've dodged the puppet because I'm going to go with Vet Hemlock. Yeah, we're getting that push now. I should have kept the puppet where it was, really. I, that's always the problem with Obulus. I can see how to get to eight points and how to get to 12, 12 is the issue. <laughs> so the puppet's dodged. Vet Hemlock then walks into the cover outside of... Spigot's one, so she just needs to walk to there. She spends Soulseer, takes three damage to make Smelling Salts cost one, and she drops Smelling Salts within two, which clears the knockdown on the puppet. Freeze the backup for action. And she's one left with which to buy an attack on Spigot. Which is tack five. Plus two friends. Spigot can't do anything here, he is in cover. Yep, so I lose one. And threes and one. Threes and one indeed. 
Where's the top hide? You got space next yeah. to the ruins, mate. Ah. So two, two of Vet Hemlock isn't even a momentous result. It's the pain, the pain, <laughs> the pain. She can do the dodge really, can't she? Can't do the damage. Yeah, all she can do is the dodge, which just takes her still within two, being further away from Hooper. <laughs> Hooper death. Now the question is to spend my two momentum to heal Brainpan. I don't think Brainpan's going to die. Famous last words. Okay, so we've just had a uh, lengthy debate about whether it's ready to go with Hooper yet. And I think, to be fair, it might as well be because otherwise Brain Pan does some dodgy things if he gets some decent rolls and runs away. So Hooper's going to pop True Grit, which gives him the plus two tack that he needs. He's going to walk back to where he was before I bless nudged him away. He's on plus one damage, but I don't think he's really going to be doing much murdering. He's going to buy a round of attacks. So... Five tap base goes down to four because you are in cover. Plus two for True Grit, plus one for Spigot. And we're looking for fours and one, mate, yeah? Yep. So we'll go here. That is three successful hits, which is going to be the momentous knockdown. I think you've got the knockdown token there. Yep. Let's just place that next to him. So we're going to pop the knockdown. That now gives me an additional plus one damage, which is useful. We're going to cut back in one second because I can hear the door going. And we've cut back. So uh, we're going to go for our second round of attacks. So Hooper has got his four tack, well, five tack, which goes down to four because you're in cover. Plus two for two grit, plus one for spigot. On plus two damage now, though, because you are shoved the boot in and tooled up. Yep. So looking for threes and one. Uh, we get two hey, ones. Roll, roll, Tom. Two that's ones. Well uh, that's four successful hits. It's going to be a momentous three up to five damage. And we're going to swing left. one more time. And I'm going to bonus time it for the extra cheeky dice, which is probably what I should have done before. And see how we do. So, threes and one. I'll re roll both of these because they are very cocked, even though. Uh, so you're okay. You're all right. One away. One, two, three, four hits. Momentous five. Yep. Leaves him on a single point of health. I should have probably bonus timed it a little bit earlier. Um, but that's not a bad showing from Hooper at all. Puts me on five momentum. I don't think I need to do much in the way of healing, so we'll end our activation there. Okay. That's put a, a world of hurt. I'm regretting on that bonus timing those earlier attacks. It's the, it's the giddiness of wanting to do damage. It's now forcing me to go, <coughs> do I sacrifice my movement to clear the knockdown, at which point I can still heal myself. So memories dodged behind Spig yeah. out of Hooper. We have got the uh, yeah the knockdown on Brain Pan is just hiding behind him there. Yeah. So it's either sacrifice movement or spend the momentum. I although we talked about it I think sacrifice movement to do it. Okay, so you're gonna stand up. Yeah, because I'm not getting away from from Hooper anyway. I can't get far enough. And then I will spend one to buy an attack with the puppet into Spigot. Spigs is gonna counter attack just in the hope of getting a knockdown to make you waste a bit of momentum. Yeah, the puppet is attack five, plus two friends. Minus one for cover. Minus cover, so up to seven, down to six. Needing threes, threes and one. one. Ow. So two is useless on the puppet. Yeah, I've got the tough hide. That is the momentous dodge, just to get momentum. You're kind of. anywhere? Um, I don't point in dodging anywhere, really. Spigot's five tack will go down to three because of Hemlock and Brain Pan crowding out. He's looking for fives against the puppet. <laughs> um, I am going to do the two damage to kill the puppet. Kill the puppet. That's the sensible option. So I don't get any... Do I get momentum for the kill, but I don't get VP? Is that the way the puppet works? You don't get... Yeah. So I get a momentum for that because it yep. is a takeout, but I don't get any VP, and that has worked wonders there. That's paid off massively. Yep. So, all I can do is attack three plus one friend minus cover. I'm going to counter attack again. 
Yeah. Because the reason one, if you get a dodgy dice here. Ah, you're okay. You're all good. So two yeah. successful hits. I get the single dodge. Yeah, you run away. You go. <laughs> Scary spigots. Uh, and I'm left hanging on my ass with two influence going to begging. You did sacrifice your movement to stand up though. You could heal yourself. Yeah, I'm going to heal myself for one. Which brings me back up to a mighty five health. And goes back to you. Faithful Pooch Quaff is just going to move round to this position here. He's going to give a pick me up to Mash, and then he's going to spend his one influence to put second wind on Mash as well. I'll give him a four inch dodge once he finishes his activation. Okay. So, it comes down to the one to make it look respectable. <laughs> so, stamina from, Bo from Bonesaw takes us to five inches there. The width of his base is the only thing getting him into shot range as we've just manipulated. So, one to sprint. Clips the, the fast ground. As we'll show there. Goes for the width of that base, gets it. Yeah, it's what makes the difference with Bonesaw now. Comes to there. We're within eight for the shot. So, meditate and take the shot. So Point of momentum. Do you want to? <laughs> But I'm, I'm meditating, so I don't think I'd need <laughs> a six dice shot missing would just cap this game off. So, you are looking for fours here. Best of luck, mate. <gasps> and it's a screamer. Do you want to go for the triple screamer? <laughs> <Try it. laughs> we will get a bonus for it, but yeah, that bangs in um, the goal. Two momentum back to you. Two momentum. The question is, do I spend one of them to dodge? So push you up to eight VP. It does. Yeah. Kind of wish. Yeah, no, I'm going to stay where I am. Because you're not putting... No, you're not putting the ball out there anyway. I'll spend one to dodge. Okay. And I will dodge. Just to be in the tap in. Just to be annoying, because if you scatter the ball poorly, I can always contest. Lovely. So I'll boot the ball out, and we'll see where we go next. Yep. So the ball's just been booted out towards Esther. She has not snapped it, because I think Mash is probably going to go for it in a second. I'm going to go with Friday instead. She's going to shadow like to this position here and she's going to buy an attack on the bird. So, attack four goes down to three. Any response, mate? Nope. We're looking for five pluses. She gets the momentous dodge, of course she does. Yep. Uh, so, it's she's going to dodge herself out of the way of both, just there. And we're just going to double check to see if we want to put up the heroic. Yeah, we're going to go for it. So Friday is going to move just to this position here. She's going to pop up her I shoot better after a beer ability for one of my momentum. And then we'll go to mash for the final activation of this turn. So if there's any indication of which channel you're watching, you now know, because the tactically <laughs> right thing to do is to just bury this ball away or keep it on mash with the resilience. But now we're going to go for the win because why not? Mash is going to go to this position here. He's going to snap the ball. He's going to use his uh, heroic play for free, which allows him to make a gigantic pass of uh, 310. He's going to try and pass the ball to Friday. So three dice kick, looking for a four. Oh my God. That is, uh, that's been due to be honest with my dice rolling. That is atrocious. Uh, so green for direction, uh, gold for distance. It's going to go in the one four inches, which is going to basically go into the woods, I believe, mate. Yep. Barrels all the way down here. I'll just scoot the camera so you can see. It just basically lands in the forest there, and all my good work is ruined. Um, what we will do is we're going to end our activation, which will put us uh, within our second wind ability, and mash again, just scooting the camera. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen is going to just scoot to here to stay within two inches of bone saw, engaging him. Well, I got exactly what I deserved there with the, uh, the attempted snapshot that went completely out the window. Uh, so I'm on plus one in terms of momentum. So we'll go to our game plan cards, mate. It's yep. going to be a biggie, this one. I've gone for a plus one, the offside trap, which means you spend plus one additional MP. You've gone for sell it to the crowd. Yep. Plus six, but a minus one influence. Gone big. Go on big, well, go big or go home. Do you want to go first or second? I think I have to go first because there are two takeouts sitting 
just next to each other. <laughs> right, so we'll go to the influence allocation for the next turn. With how things look, as we enter turn four and that awful kick out is causing all manner of issues, we've done an extensive measure with Obulus to see if he can get a goal run. He can't quite, essentially. That uh, game plan card is just going to cause issues either way. So how have we stacked up then, mate? We've gone four on Bonesaw because he's going to need to spend time chasing the ball if I'm still in the game. We've got four on Brainpan. Brainpan will be going first, so he's going to resummon the puppet. Uh, we've got one on Hemlock, two on Dirge, none on Silence, and four on Obulus. I've gone for just Death Streak, really. We've got two on Friday in case you need to go and punt the ball a mile away and kill the game there. Four on Spigot, three on Hooper, six on Esters. Kill things is essentially the way this is planned to go. So we'll go yep. to the first activation of the fourth turn, which will be the Brewers, uh, so the Morticians Guild. Yep. Right, so with the Memory Dodge, Memory is into Friday, and we're going to go with Brain Pan. Yes, yeah, so you've summoned Memory, dodged him, because it's yep. your choice in which order it happens. I think they're both at the start of the activation. Yep. So we're playing it the way we think it is, which is summon within two, dodge for two, and then start buying attacks. Friday is five to one. one do you want to do anything? No, I'm good. <laughs> five to one because she's near Spigot, I think. We'll, we'll see how you roll before I declare a counter. Right. So five dice. Nothing. Yep, that was alright. <laughs> and buy the next one. Nothing. <laughs> next one. That's big as help. Better. That's a little bit better, it's still not great. I'll take the momentous one. Puts it down to six health. And then last one. Momentous one again. Puts it down to five health. And then I will spend one to heal myself four, which will take me back up to nine. Yeah, if you thought the last play was dumb, this is even worse. <laughs> so, shadow like away from the puppet. We've just measured this very carefully to kind of loop around, not get the rough ground. It's just about eight inches, so I'm going to spend one to sprint in this pattern. Staying outside of the inch of the bird, trying to delicately move everything really carefully. And then Friday is going to spend one and my momentum to have a blast on goal because I think even if I miss it's not the worst thing in the world two dice kick will go down to uh, th sorry three dice kick will go down to two because you are engaging me I am needing a four plus to close out the game yep. hey handshake and camera sir she doesn't let me down the second time round fantastic game uh, to bang that in and that finishes us on 10-8 uh, so 12-8 I believe yep. so well done we'll go to the post-match summaries next and we are back, and that was a, a cagey trick. Oh, it's glad, it's oh, another tight game. team and got the goals. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we always seem to have these tight ones where it, it swings either way. Yeah, I think and you said you were. I think you said on camera you can get to eight points confidently. You need that kind of beat down character. Really yeah, I think I think I was out. missing. I was missing some momentous damage in there because the puppet's not enough. Mm. It's only got three health. It's easy to to knock out. Um, but yeah, I think it was. It's a good game though. Yeah, it was. Two, good two Friday goals in there and a missed Friday goal. Yeah, Friday managed to bang that one in at the end with the, the lack of dice was really nice. Superstar striker. She's absolutely fantastic. And the uh, I think Spigot was a real sleeping dark yeah. horse, whatever the phrase is for that. In the sense that he had nothing on him for two terms because he really doesn't need it. And then you just put four on him and your opponent's yeah. like, oh yeah, he's a thing as well when he knocks people down. Yeah, I think that was it. If you, even if you'd missed that goal yeah. at the end, I couldn't really see where I was getting the ball back to go. Yeah, I think he made a really good point that even yeah. though Hooper is very telegraphed in that scenario, playing the, as I call it, decimate role of getting every buff under the sun, yeah. with Esters and Spigger, it doesn't matter how much it's telegraphed, they can probably get to you and it's probably still going to really hurt. Yeah, he's he's running in, what, 11 inches, yeah. the two-inch engagement. And with True Grit, he's just yeah. laughing at any condition that you put on him to slow him down, really. Yeah. Um, no, it was, it was a really good game. Yeah, Happy to be back. Fantastic. And we're going to go and play another sneaky one straight away now. Yeah, this is a good thing about these. Yeah. I think one thing we can definitely say before we finish as well, play different lineups. I think we, we yeah. definitely pulled something midway through that game that not having some players accessible or choosing not to play the, the combos, being yeah. able to put like uh, different characters on the pitch, really, really good fun actually. Yeah, it was. It's a chance to, chance to do something that you wouldn't do in a competitive environment. Yeah, in different styles. Like, Brain Pan and Memory are one that you yeah. always say that you wouldn't play in competitive because of the clock, but actually they're yeah. quite fun to... Exactly what can I do with the puppet yeah. today and how far can it go? They were, although I think Ghost Gas needs to come out in the next one because yeah. 
because he, he's a gorgeous model. Yeah, he's sort of <laughs> and beautifully painted models. So thank you again. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, right, guys. That was, uh, I think we'll get the handshake because we've missed it. We need to do the handshake, yeah, yeah we definitely. <laughs> the handshake must be on camera, otherwise yeah. it's not a legitimate affair yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. Right, yeah. so we'll see you in the Cheers next one, guys. Thank you. What a video that was. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, check out this one, because this is great, and check out this one, because this is great as well. If you enjoyed those videos, there is a link in the description below to our Patreon page. If you want to support us, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you.